Hi, today's video is going to be about population genetics and uh, I'm going to talk about how to measure inbreeding and how to find inbreeding coefficient. And here's a problem. Wild oats can pollinate itself but uh, the pollen also blows in the wind so it can cross fertilize. The task is to estimate the relative proportions of these two types of mating. And here's the data for the phosphoglucomutase or PGM gene. Uh, we have uh, 104 individuals that belong to this genotype, capital A, capital A, 9 individuals that belong to this genotype, capital A, capital B, and 42 uh, uh, individuals that belong to the capital B, capital B genotype. And total number of the individuals would be 155. So we have to measure inbreeding. If you know how to solve this problem, I recommend you to stop video here, try to solve this problem on your own, and when you would be ready with your results, you can run video again, and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. So first of all, uh, I'm going to show you um, formula that is Hardy-Weinberg formula. Uh, which stands for the frequencies of the three possible genotypes. So we have three genotypes here. So here is a formula P squared plus 2 PQ plus Q squared equal to 1. And for the P squared uh, we have genotype that is capital A, capital A. For 2 PQ we have genotype that is capital A, capital B. And for the Q squared, we have genotype that is capital B, capital B. Uh, you might be interested why we have uh, all the letters that is uh, capitalized. Uh, unlike in simple Mendelian genetics, where we have one gene that uh, one allele that is dominant, another that is uh, small letter would be recessive allele. Uh, sometimes uh, we also may have uh, co-dominance or incomplete dominance. In this case, we may use uh, capitals, uh, capital letters for both alleles because this genotype here, this would be intermediate genotype. For example, this uh, for example, may have uh, white flowers, uh, this genotype may have uh, red flowers, and this genotype might have uh, intermediate color like uh, pink, for example. So, uh, now uh, I also want to tell you that all the alleles P plus all the alleles Q would equal to 1. So, all the alleles P represent uh, allele capital A and Q uh, represents uh, capital B alleles. So, how we are going to find uh, allele uh, frequency in this uh, particular uh, study. Uh, we have uh, total number 155 individuals that would have uh, 310 uh, alleles because each individual uh, deployed so has two alleles. So we have to multiply this number by two. And here we have 104 individuals that belong to the genotype capital A, capital A. So 104 individuals would have uh, 208 allele uh, capital A. And here we have 9 individuals that uh, uh, heterozygous, so has uh, 1 uh, allele that is capital A and uh, one allele that is capital B. So here we would have nine uh, alleles that is capital A. So we have to add this number to this number, but we have to multiply this number by two. So uh, let's find how uh, many uh, alleles that is capital A in this particular uh, community. So we have uh, 208 plus 9. So uh, together this is going to be um, 217. 
and uh, in order to find uh, uh, frequency of this allele that is capital A we just have to divide this number by the total number of alleles and total number of alleles uh, once again would be uh, this number multiplied by 2 so this is going to be uh, 310 and if uh, we divide this number uh, roughly around the numbers would be 0 0.7 this is going to be frequency of the allele that is capital A and how we are going to find the frequency of the allele capital B we can use uh, the same uh, technique or uh, according to this formula uh, all the alleles that is A plus all the alleles uh, B when we add them would equal to 1 so that uh, automatically means that uh, we can find easily uh, frequency of the allele B we just have to um, uh, we have to minus from 1 uh, frequency of the allele capital A so this is going to be 0 0.7 and this is how we find a frequency of the allele uh, that is capital B is going to be 0 0.3 and this is frequency of the um, capital B allele so now we know uh, frequency of the two alleles so this is capital A allele frequency and this is capital B allele frequency and uh, I want to tell you uh, before I move to the next step that uh, we measure uh, in breeding coefficient between uh, 0 and 1 0 would be on this scale uh, means that uh, this uh, particular community in the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium and uh, 1 would be uh, the greatest number and this would mean uh, complete uh, inbreeding when we have complete inbreeding uh, when uh, we uh, do self-pollination for many generations for example like for 10 generations we would have a 99.99 uh, 99 something uh, uh, percent of the total population to uh, that is going to be homozygous for all the loci so uh, heterozygosity with each round of uh, self-pollination would uh, uh, be divided by two so uh, if we self-pollinate uh, for example this community uh, and in the next uh, generation uh, number of the heterozygotes would be uh, least by two and uh, if we uh, repeat this experiment one more time we have to divide the number of the heterozygotes by two and so on so uh, the greater coefficient to one the greater uh, uh, would be in breeding so how we are going to find it uh, let's uh, find uh, what is the uh, prediction according to this formula uh, of the heterozygotes uh, in this uh, community and uh, in other words we call it uh, expected ratio so let's uh, do small uh, calculations uh, for this part of this formula so we have uh, to multiply 2 by number p or p equal to capital A and this is going to be 0 0.7 and by number Q or capital B that is uh, 0 0.3 so and we are going to find uh, expected frequency of the heterozygous so expected frequency of the heterozygous genotype would be 0 0.42 
and now this frequency we have to multiply by number of the total individuals so by 155 and now we are going to get how many individuals uh, we should expect to belong to this uh, heterozygous genotype and the answer here would be 65.1 and as you see this is uh, very different from what we have here so uh, this is uh, what we uh, actually have and this is uh, expected uh, number uh, that uh, we have according to this formula so uh, now we can find uh, inbreeding coefficient and let me clean the space a little bit so inbreeding coefficient we find according to this formula where uh, f equal to 1 minus number of observed individuals so number observed in individuals divided by a uh, number of expected so let's put uh, our numbers that we got here so uh, inbreeding coefficient would equal to 1 minus 9 divided by 65.1 and the answer here would be 1 minus 0 0.14 so f would equal to 0 0.84 and this is going to be our answer today and as you remember we have a scale between 0 and 1 where 1 means uh, complete inbreeding so this number uh, very close to 1 and that means that uh, inbreeding coefficient is very high so most of this population would be result of uh, self-pollination and would be very high in breed. This is all for today. Thank you for your attention. See you next video. Thumbs up if you like this video. Goodbye.